Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Adventures in Dog Training with American Standard Dog Training and American Overwatch Canine Services. <laughs> Hey folks, so as you saw from our, our uh, introduction there, Mr. Rex here is a wild man. So we'll get into uh, who he is, what he's all about, a little bit of a backstory, and then uh, we'll showcase some of his talents. So he is a 10 and a half year old Belgian Malinois, retired police dog. As you can see, he's still got it. Um, he has many more than a handful of actual street bites under his belt, an actual monster. I mean, on the street, this dog is serious. If you can notice here in his jowls, how much muscle he still retains um, from his many years of police work. Now he retired a little young for police dogs. He retired at around age seven uh, because the handler um, uh, ended up leaving the unit and left the unit on good terms. So sometimes the agency will reward the handler by gifting the dog to them. So he got to retire a little early. Most dogs retire around anywhere 10, 11, 12 years old. So he retired at seven, which has allowed him to maybe not age quite as quickly as other dogs might. Um, so 10 and a half years old, you can see he's got a little bit of the gray beard coming in, but it wouldn't be out of the norm for a Malinois to work uh, in a police department 10, 11, even 12 years old, whereas German Shepherds typically, they're retiring out around 10 years old. So you get a couple more years worth of life or workability out of a Belgian Malinois. Again, one, one more reason why police departments are switching over to Malinois. So uh, let's see what else we can talk about him. So he worked from about a year and a half years old on the street until about seven years old and in that time he's had a couple hundred um, man finds or apprehensions or locations of uh, tracks and finds of subjects he was dual purpose narcotics dog so he was also a dope dog had plenty of finds with that uh, but, and again like I mentioned not all bad guys give up and so he has had to have been deployed in the past and has actual street bites under his belt and the uh, the damage this boy does is uh, it's pretty serious. This is a real street dog. Uh, actually, he still intimidates me to this day. This is not my dog. This is a dog that um, we watched here just boarding. No training needed. We're just boarding him here for a friend of ours. That's a uh, uh, former police canine handler. And uh, this is his pup here. You notice one of his teeth there is titanium, that lower right canine or lower left. And again, let me see if I can show you his jowls without him taking my thumbs off. See that muscle there where my thumbs are? That's the power up here too all right now mind you he hasn't done bite work in like three years almost no training in the last three years so everything you can see here might be a little rusty but we just did a quick little five minute tune-up session if you want to call it that just to see where he was at and he's still doing amazing this dog has competed and uh well you guys will see enough talking so we'll get into it we'll do a little healing everything off leash he is on an e-collar here foot here, foots. Here, foots. There, there's the e-collar. His handler's in the background, so he wants to go to daddy, but he's gonna work for me now. Good boy. See, I got a little tug toy. That's all he's working for is his tug toy. So that'll be his reward. The tug toy to the dog is like a mini sleeve, or you could argue that the bite sleeve is just a giant tug toy, so they work real hard for that pick up the pace a little bit mind you he is an old man so ten and a half years old in police dog sit sit oh yeah in police dog years he's probably around 65 years old so not too bad for old man yes good boy yeah. All right. as you can notice he shakes like a monster Los! Knee biting. Knee bite. Shh. Knee bite. Yes. Yeah. So he's probably. How, was, how much did he weigh in his prime? 85? Uh, and he's probably still around that right now. 80, 85. He probably lost a lot of muscle mass or a little bit. Los! Knee biting. Off. So we're still in a residential neighborhood. I mean, I trust him. It's just we got to be a little extra firm with him. So if you hear me yelling commands at him, it's because I don't want him off goofing around. 
foots. If you want a foot, foots. Uh, let's see, let's do some distance control with them. We'll probably do it this way. Foots. More foots or foos? Everybody pronounces uh, words differently. Foots. Sit. Sit. Is he supposed to auto sit when you come to a stop? Yeah. You're just being lazy. Yeah, he, you know, he wants the toy, so. Blivin. Life. Again, he's rusty. This boy has not worked in three years, so this ain't bad at all. So this is called, uh, we'll just pull him in the heel position. So I'm going to call him. Um, should do it by hand only, right? We'll try. Okay. Uh, so I'm by hand, am I in frame? All right, by hand only, I'm going to ask him to come into a heel position. Nope, doesn't got it. Remember, my hand command is going to look different than his, than his uh, original handlers, so. Here. Clean that up, buddy. I'm not paying for that. Heel. I said heel. <laughs> Did I step off with the left, though? Yeah. All right, so that's how we knew what to do. So we teach them if we step off with the left. Come on, Bubba. You're sloppy as hell. So we're going to clean that up right now? Yes. Yes. Or he's never been delivered it that way. Yes. Ah, yeah. Yeah. At least I was respectful. I'm going to take my hand off. Los. You biting. We're going to do something fun in a minute, folks, so stay tuned. We're going to bring out the sleeve and show you some more bite work with uh, Crazy Man here. So let's see. Let's see if I just step off with the left. Not bad. Now I'm going to step off with the right. Uh, pretty cool, huh? Still got it. Still got it. <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit too about what is a Belgian Malinois, what is a working line Belgian Malinois, what makes up the genetics of a working line police Belgian Malinois. And uh, we'll give you a hint. This dog ain't pure Malinois, all right? Most police dogs are not. So, we'll talk a little bit about what he is, but let's do a halfway with him, Blyvin. Try to get behind him. So now, halfway to me, we'll down him. Here. Off. Good. Yes. Good boy. Here. Los, knee biting, knee biting, leave it, foot. Ain't gonna be all sloppy with that on the ground. <laughs> He's smart, man. He's trying to cheat the, cheat the game, cheat the system. Off, good, yes. So I've literally only worked with this dog for five minutes before uh, we got on camera. We had him here for a week, but I didn't have time to work him. I thought he needed it, but just to show you what a police dog's capable of three years after retirement. Shh. Leave it. Good boy. All right. Uh, so we'll talk real quick about his genetics. Look, we haven't done a DNA test on him, but you can just tell from looking at him. He's very tall. And um, over in Europe, when they're doing Schutzen and all that, I've said it in some of my other videos, they don't care what the genetics of the dog are. They don't care about the lineage. They care about the workability. So they like to sprinkle in a little bit of pit bull. They like to sprinkle in a little bit of Great Dane. Uh, anything to build a little, because Malinois are typically smaller in stature, right? And police dogs or police agencies, police handlers, they want a little more oomph when they send a dog in to, t you know, take care of business on a bad guy that might have shot or killed a police officer or just a real badass criminal, you need a real badass dog. And so, rather than send in a 50 or 60 pound Malinois, which there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's some 50, 60 pound Malinois out there that are like 40 pound dog and like 15 pound head. They got pit bull heads, but in a small package, pocket rockets we call them. But anyways, they like to sprinkle in a little bit of uh, 
other breeds, A, for the health, and, and B, for you can get a little bit more of a pit bull size head, or in his case, I wouldn't be surprised he's got some kind of Great Dane or something in there. He's very tall, or taller than, you know, a typical Malinois. Um, so I'm 5'10", maybe 5'11 on a good day, uh, 225, 230, so to put size comparison in. Uh, and again, he's about 80, maybe 85 pounds right now. So, all right, and he's a good boy. <laughs> he's really good. So hey, not only has this dog won some competitions, not show competitions, but workability competitions, but uh, he's definitely won the competition on the street. This dog, uh, you could take in the backyard any day of the week on the baddest of the baddest criminals, and this dog will perform. But there's another video we're gonna have after this, and it's gonna talk about, uh, you know, should you buy, should you get, should you train a protection dog for your house to protect your house? Because this dog is a 10 out of 10 when it comes to working on the street and protection, but the question remains is, would he be a great uh, house dog, a good protection dog? So that's gonna be the, the maybe part two of this video. For now, we're gonna pause it, I'm gonna go get a sleeve, and we're gonna have some fun with uh, Mr. Rex here. Yeah. It's cool, huh? So people might ask what it feels like. It feels like tremendous pressure. Tremendous pressure. Fasta. Yeah. Tremendous pressure. Nothing personal. It kind of feels like, I don't know, man. Like a real heavy guy just stepping on me like a 400 pound guy stepping on you with his foot don't ask me what the pounds per square inch or any of that enough to tear a hole in your arm and rip out some flesh so yeah so the Malinois are kind of known for their they're called land sharks because they're thrashing he's getting tired but like that yes I'm up. Watch out. good boy Loose. and he bite me 